Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about Bill 4. That's British Columbia's Firearm Violence Prevention Act. I spoke in some detail about this in a previous video, which I'll try to link here. Um, this has now been passed in British Columbia, and it's passed basically unchanged from the first reading. So everything I said in my first video still applies today. This is going to have some tremendous impact on firearm owners, on paintballers, on airsofters in British Columbia, because this is really not a great bill. A lot of it is modeled off the criminal code provisions, but just slightly different. And what this means is that you're going to end up having to follow both sets of rules, the criminal code rules and the Firearm Violence Prevention Act, which means you now need to know twice the laws and those little differences in some places can be quite significant differences because there's a few places where the criminal code either requires you to do a thing or not do a thing. And the Firearm Violence Prevention Act uh, requires the opposite. There's several places in the Firearm Violence Prevention Act where it essentially punishes you for other people's opinions. How are you supposed to control that? Well, that's going to be a problem, especially when you consider, for instance, that the criminal code prevents concealing airsoft guns in the way that I've seen uh, suggested is a way to deal with the requirements of the Firearm Violence Prevention Act. So I want to comment on some things I've seen said online. I'm not going to be calling anyone out specifically, but I am going to be sort of talking about some of the ideas I've seen uh, floating around. And one of those ideas is that Bill 4 is going to save us from Bill C-21, or at least save people who are in British Columbia from C-21. And I've seen two separate arguments to set this out. The first argument is that they're saying, hey, listen, it creates this new category for airsoft guns. And so now they're not going to be treated as these 84 sub three firearms and they won't be treated as uh, prohibited replicas. We have Bill C-21 comes in. So we'll we'll be able to do airsoft just like we always have, because Bill 4 will in some way trump Bill C-21. This reflects a fundamental misunderstanding of Canadian law. Uh, federal law trumps provincial law where they come into conflict. Uh, we have the principle of federal paramountcy. So Bill 4 cannot operate as a shield in this fashion. Um, if Bill 4 says something that contradicts Bill C-21, Bill C-21 is going to uh, take effect and overwrite Bill 4. However, most cases, it's not going to be that kind of direct conflict. What you're instead going to end up with is situations where you can actually apply both sets of restrictions. And where you can apply both sets of restrictions, the result is not that you get to follow the least restrictive set. The result is actually that you have to follow both things, and so you are even more restricted. Bill 4 doesn't act as a shield against Bill C-21. It just acts as a further leash. The other thing I've seen suggested is that Bill 4 can somehow prevent Bill C-21 from coming into effect. And that, I think, reflects a fundamental misunderstanding of how these laws end up operating politically. One thing I've seen a lot of people commenting on is they've said, it seems like there's a lot of airsoft stuff in the news. And I've seen some people advancing conspiracy theory kind of things of like, the police are making this up. The police aren't making anything up. They don't have to. That's, And why would they? They don't want to get caught in something like that. They're not... That's ridiculous. However, the police do have the power to choose what things they want to make press releases about and what things they don't. And so we already know that the police are one of the... the or at least the police organizations are one of the groups that are trying to push for an airsoft ban. And so it's really easy for them to just say, we are going to put out press releases for every airsoft thing that happens and thereby magnify its sort of apparent impact to the public. So that's something that the police can do and appear to be doing. Several people have noticed this trend and I don't think you're wrong. This seems to be what's going on there. However, that doesn't get harder for them with more laws. It gets way easier for them. 
when you put in a whole bunch of new airsoft related laws and you think about the stats going forward are the stats going to show that airsoft related incidents went down or is it going to show that they went up it's going to show they went up right because now there's more ways you can have an airsoft related incident so instead of you know just only criminal code violations we can also see now airsoft violations for Bill 4, Firearm Violence Prevention Act, some of which may be really innocuous, but it's going to give them all sorts of statistics to use to attack Airsoft. So this isn't going to be something where they say, oh, well, you know, Bill 4, we don't need Bill C-21 now. They're going to say Bill 4 is providing great evidence for why we need C-21 and how to justify this to the public. So Bill 4 doesn't prevent C-21. It makes it more likely. This is not a great thing. The other thing, and this is sort of a trend I've seen, is some fractionalization within the communities. And what I mean by that is that the firearm community and the paintball community and the airsoft community are strongest if we all work together, if we all maintain tight alliances because we all have very similar interests on this, which is we want to be able to keep doing the things that bring us joy, doing the things that make us happy and fulfill us in life. And all of these laws that apply to one of us can apply to the others of us because they're all interconnected. So we do better working together. Suggestions of, you know, let's throw one community under the bus are not helpful. And one thing that I've been seeing is some people who will, for instance, say, well, I play paintball and it'll be okay if they ban airsoft because we'll get more people playing paintball if they can't play airsoft anymore. And surprise, surprise, some of the people pushing this notion seem to be people who own paintball fields. And I'm not saying all paintball owners. I'm just saying there's a few people where I'm kind of wondering. Now, I get it. I mean, this is really tough economic times if you're doing any sort of, you know, running any business, but especially the kind of businesses where you have a whole bunch of people uh, playing together in, in some cases, tight proximity. Uh, it's people are less keen to go out and do things in, in those kinds of scenarios. And there's government restrictions. It's really hard to keep a business open. And I, I imagine that anything that brings more people in the door seems like a really good idea. But this is real short-term thinking because if you are solely somebody who's interested in paintball and you have no interest in airsoft, airsoft is the best thing running for you right now. And I'm going to explain why. The people who don't like airsoft are also not terribly excited about paintball. When we have, you know, doctors groups talking about uh, airsoft as being gateway guns. Well, guess what they're going to think the gateway guns are once airsoft is done. All right. Paintball markers. They're going to be, that's where they're going to be setting their sights next. If you don't think there's any misuse of paintball markers or paintball guns, um, you're just wrong. It's very easy for paintball to be the next thing on the chopping block. And you might be saying, oh, that's ridiculous. And I'll tell you that the airsofters a couple years back were saying, oh, that's ridiculous. They're never going to come for us. And now airsofting is fighting for its life. If you're a paintballer, you want the fight to stay with airsoft and not with paintball. And the way you do that is by helping airsoft stay alive. So if you are a paintballer, the airsofters right now are not your enemy. They're your friend. So help keep airsoft alive in order to help keep paintball alive. The other thing I've seen is some suggestion that uh, it's a good thing that the Firearm Violence Prevention Act is going to really crack down on people playing airsoft on private property. And it seems like the people pushing that suggestion also run airsoft fields bit of a conflict of interest there so again once you know they're not going to stop wanting to crack down they're just going to say listen we you know we laid however many charges under the firearm violence prevention act so 
That justifies more restrictions, not less. It suggests that there's a big problem, not that a problem is being solved. Uh, further, the guys who are playing out in the woods are also the guys who come in and play at fields. So it's your own, it's the same market. You can't, you know, just say, oh, well, if they just do it to those guys, it'll be fine. So working together is a key thing here. Everybody needs to sort of work together here. And fundamentally, you need to realize that social problems don't tend to be solved by adding more laws. Uh, there is this constant treadmill where we add laws and then we see violations of those laws. And then we add more laws in the notion that that's going to help. That doesn't typically solve the underlying problems. So I don't like Bill 4. It's not going to save anything, I don't think. Um, it's certainly not going to prevent Bill C-21. If Bill C-21 is prevented, it'll be because people are getting up and speaking out against the problems in the bill. It's going to be because people are standing together. It's going to be because it's made politically difficult, not because we say, okay, well, we agree it's a problem. We agree it needs to be restricted. And that's how these sorts of things are going to be seen. So this is, a, I guess, a bit of a rant, but I just... You know, these are all things I enjoy. I like airsofting. I like paintballing. I like going and target shooting. And all of these things that bring fulfillment to my life and that are important to me and to, you know, my personal health and well-being are under threat. So let's all rally together, guys, and fight to save this stuff. We have everything to lose. Anyway... That's kind of my rant. I'll get back to talking more strictly about law very shortly. I want to go through and do the long version of the discussion of the Smith & Wesson case. I do think that's a really important case. And a lot of the discussion of my short video uh, made it clear that the long video will be beneficial because there's a bunch of points people were raising that are actually discussed in the case that I sort of had to cut to get it to a half hour time frame. So I'll do a longer discussion of that one. And if you already got what you need from the too long, didn't read version, you don't have to watch it. But I think that there's a lot in there that really uh, is worthy of some discussion and some, uh, some analysis. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please share it with your friends. Please subscribe to see more content. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta. Jason Elliott, Canada's National Firearms Association, North Central Process Service, Kyle Martin, Jean-Guy Toussaint, uh, bcamf.org, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. All of those, again, at the $50 level. At the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited. And at the $20 level, Mark Whittington, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Adam Meester, and Mark Olivier Demour. As well as all of the people at the $10 level, uh, your support is appreciated, but... There's too many of you to read it through these days without uh, sort of getting a sore throat. So thank you. And uh, I hope this has armed you with knowledge. And let me know in the comments uh, below what you think. Maybe you think, you know, I'm wrong on this. Maybe you think I'm just being a blowhard. But this matters to me. I This is the stuff that makes me happy in life. So I, I really hope to see the community kind of rally together and to work against bad laws, not sort of undermine, uh, undermine what we're working for here. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge.